I uncovered the batteries. Now you might remember this was all stuffed with insulation all around here before. And I had simply just peeled back the insulation for um, when it started getting warmer. And I'm doing some battery maintenance. I've got the BLS desulfator has been on this battery bank forever. And this was all covered under wood and then under two tarps, which I'm going to re-tarp it here in a little bit. And then I've taken a 45 watt solar panel, oh, which needs a cleaning now. A 45 watt solar panel. And that is now hooked up to the secondary battery bank, which needs some charging. I need water. I don't know how, but although these weren't hooked up, they're low on water. And look at that, there's corrosion. There's corrosion, although there was no, uh, uh, they weren't in use, I don't know. They boiled off, you can see here. Probably just from, from the actual heat in the air caused them to boil off. And there's corrosion, that's odd. So anyway, I've gotta go get distilled water later on in town. And these need some maintenance as well. I've been checking the fluids. I put some in, but I'm a little bit low yet. So I've gotta go get some more distilled water. Battery maintenance day. And uh, yeah, hopefully gonna bring these back into service and it'll eventually I'm gonna take the other battery desulfator, the clan that's in the RV, and bring it over to here and hook it up onto this battery bank with the solar panel and just let that sit for a couple months. Now let's take you into the RV and show you some good news. Now forgive the mess, all my bookkeeping is here. I have taken the shelf out of the RV and put all the books in a pile. Um, these are the two batteries that I had got back from Advanced Auto, new, brand new, in uh, October, December, October, November, December time period. And they are sitting at, uh, ah, 13.5, a cloud went over, it's 14.1 before I grabbed the camera. Anyway, they've been on the Harbor Freight charge controller and the Harbor Freight solar panels forever. And if you remember, I had the Clen desulfator on them for a while. And then I took that off because it was interfering with the Bedini, which is now running the, or charging and restoring the other four golf cart batteries. Now you remember from my old videos when those, with all my batteries went bad in the RV at once. And uh, they never came back up. They were really messed up and in bad shape. Now you will remember that the batteries were about 12.2 volts and I could not get them any higher. They were 12.2 volts and that was it. Now it's going to be awkward for me. I'm going to try to rig up the voltmeter and show you the voltage on these batteries. It's quite amazing. Now this has been running. I've had the Bedini on here and I've had it cranked up a little bit high um, so it stays running. For some reason it kept stopping on me all the time. So I had it tuned up a little bit on the high side, using more power, which didn't matter because I wasn't using this battery set anyway, uh, but therefore still charging and desulfating the old golf cart batteries. Again, remember these were 12.2 volts, 12.1, 12.2 volts. I couldn't bring them up for anything. They were done, useless for me. Uh, let me get the voltmeter on there and show you what's going on. Look at this, 12.89 volts. Can you believe this? I've got the positive right there. I've got the negative right here. Those four golf cart batteries that were nearly dead are 12.89 volts after sitting on, on the Bedini motor for a couple months, undisturbed, just sitting here for, I don't know, one or two months. I don't even remember, I never paid attention. I just spun the wheel up and I walked away and I've done nothing, nothing at all, for many, many weeks. 12.89 volts, can you believe it? That is so incredible. That is a miracle. Now, you guys who have been following me, remember, these batteries were dead. These batteries were not doing anything. Uh, I took them to Advanced Auto and they did some weird odd tests and said they were okay, but I took them home and they weren't holding any usable energy. And these are brand new again. Remember, these were replaced because two were actually boiled off by from uh, Advanced Auto. I don't know what happened there, but two of them actually boiled off and self-destructed. But the original four that I had had are now at 12.89 volts. Quite amazing. Quite impressive. And you guys know, these batteries, the, from my videos, there was no magic here. There was no fiddling around, just the Benini motor. This thing really works. And 
some people try to claim that the Bedini motor is uh, a, a scam and all you're doing is a one-to-one -one charge from one set of batteries to another, but you can't take one battery, which these are set up as one battery, and charge two batteries with it one-to-one. -one. It just doesn't physically work. I've got two 6-volt batteries charged four 6-volt batteries. You just can't physically do that. It doesn't work. The real deal is something else is going on here and these have been desulfated by the Bedini motor and charged at the same time but with radiant energy. High voltage spikes of radiant energy pulsing each time a magnet on that wheel passes a coil it sends a pulse of energy into those batteries, a high voltage pulse. So it's pulsing super super fast right now. And that is what broke up the sulfation, the lead sulfate on the plates and put it up to 12.89 volts. Batteries that were not working for me and were not taking a charge. So I am looking for a uh, some wire. This is what's been holding me up. I'm going to make a Bedini motor on video. I've got everything but the wire. I'm looking around trying to find some wire in the area because I don't know this area as well. I gotta shut that off. And I will be making a Bedini motor on video, step by step, through and through, and showing you how to adjust it and tune it and use it. So uh, hopefully we'll be doing that pretty soon here in the next weeks or month or so at the most. Because I have everything but the wire. So stay tuned, guys. It really works. So I got the distilled water and I topped off all my batteries today. And they're boiling happily. I don't know if you can see inside. Let's see if I can show you. Can you see that fluid level boiling? You can see the bubbles actually. Yeah, you can. Look at that. They're taking on some serious charge. Forklift batteries really boil a lot. I call it boiling. Sorry, it's not the proper term, I know. Well, anyway, tapped off all the cells. This guy, too. And uh, I'm about to check his voltage. It's been a couple hours since I started working on these. Tapped off all, this, all the cells. And um, we'll let him go. Keep charging them. Now I'm going to go back into the RV and check all those cells as well. And you know, all the, uh, the batteries there. Well, all the batteries' water levels are good. I didn't expect otherwise because there's no real stress on these in here. There's nothing going on, just... Uh, the desulfator and the Bedini, well, the desulfator was running on these for a while, and just the charge controller, solar panel on there, 45 watt solar panel. And I am now setting up the voltmeter to check the, uh, the voltage of these at rest after sitting for a few minutes. 12.85 volts at rest, look at that. Next thing to do is to put a little bit of a load on these and see what they can do, and then I will um, fire up the Benini motor again and let it run for a while. 12.85 at rest. That's after about 20 minutes of rest. Nice. Very, very good. I am truly amazed. I did not think that these old golf cart batteries would come back out of it. It looks like they're going to be all right. So I'm going to I'm going to get uh, something to put a load on these. And uh, what do we got? 200, 400 amp hours of battery capacity. So I'm going to put a load on these and um, see what they can do for now. I have my Vi Air air compressor sitting here connected to the batteries. Um, the voltage is down to 12.81 because I shortly turned it on and off for a minute. And I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to flip it on as I hold the uh, or watch the battery voltage 12.439. And then I'm going to shoot the sprayer a little bit. That uses the air, but it drops. Yeah, that sucks it down. Let it set for a minute. This is an amazing air compressor I'm reviewing right now, actually, by the way. Well, that's a separate video. Um, you'll be seeing the complete review coming up later. You saw me open this up a while back, and I am uh, doing a thorough review of it. And my reviews, as you, some of you may know, are not just an overnight thing. I take my time and do it right. Uh, 
and conveniently this draws 30 40 amps so it's uh, uh, 30 amps 30 amps so it's definitely a good test of the battery's capacity See? it jumps back up 12.5 comes back it was 12.65 a minute ago when I uh, at rest before I press the button just just now comes up and I'll press the button again take some air see it's settling up it's got some c capacity they're getting up there take that down a little bit more it's 30 amps running out of them but that shouldn't go that low they shouldn't go that low under load should they 400 amp hours of batteries 30 amps drawn off of them what do you think 400 amp hours of battery <clears throat> capacity with 30 amps drawn out of them it's almost 10 percent don't think it should drop that that fast but then again these were badly def desulfated not too long ago badly desulfated and I had uh, considered them unfit for use in well for anything for me they wouldn't go over 12.1 volts 12.2 um, no matter what take a little bit more out of there this is an awesome air compressor. It has enough pressure to blow air. I mean, you can hear that air blowing. That is a serious air compressor. See, 12.0, 11.9. So that's got a little bit of an air tank in there. But again, that's a review, a separate review. What I'm doing right now is I want to drain these batteries down, and then I'm going to get the Bedini running back on them again. So I'm going to drain them down to about 12.2 at rest and then put them back on the Bedini motor and let them charge back up. And this is how you restore your batteries to full capacity with the Bedini motor. By charging them up until they stop going uh, increasing in voltage and then put a, a drain on them and then let them rest a bit and then fire up the Bedini again and let it bring them back up and it'll go up to a higher yet voltage. And the more you cycle it, the higher capacity those batteries are going to have. Let's take some more pressure or power out. Yeah, that should be good enough. That's that's quite a uh, a drain on those batteries. That's 30 amps a pop running that compressor. So I'll let them rest a bit, and we'll come back in a while and see what the resting voltage is after that little bit of drain, and then uh, put them back in the Medini. We'll be back in a while. Okay, 12.33 at rest, and I'll spin up the Medini. Make sure all the inputs and outputs are on. We do not ever want to work this without the uh, output, so you'll blow the transistor and damage the coil even, possibly. And then the voltage should go up. Of course, the Bedini does not like a, uh, a voltmeter. I'll give that a faster spin. It's hard to do with the camera in my hand. There we go. Now the light comes on. Now it'll get brighter as it spins up. Actually, as the battery charges more and more, this will start changing its speed to match the the battery. Uh, it has to do with um, impedance of the battery. Uh, there it goes, 12.35. It's going to start going up a little bit at a time. At least it should. Anyway, we'll let it run for a while. We'll come back in a few days, weeks, whatever. See what it does. But that's that's one cycle of the uh, with the Bedini motor cycling through on the batteries on the path to restoration. There, hear that spinning up. I don't know if you can hear the difference. 
takes a while to get up to speed. Especially with a meter on it. Anyway, I'll disconnect the meter and uh, let it go.